Okay, so most people have never actually met a true believer. Now, sure, we've read stories about believers, we know that true believers exist, but we hardly ever see them. Well, Be Holy is a podcast that shines light on the behaviors, the mindset, and the duties of a believer so that we can recognize God's children even when they don't look like God's children. Yeah, it's a bit of a process. Each lesson is given by our own Pastor Nard. Your sins have been forgiven. All you have to do is believe it, and God will help you through your journey. You've traveled long enough without Him. Today on Be Holy, we're talking about Jesus being the grapevine, or the true vine. Oh yes, listen, most of us don't know anything about farming. I mean, if we didn't know anything about agriculture, we would know uh, the importance of a vine, and how it connects us to the roots, the source, if you will. But, uh, We're going to talk about that. Let's talk about it. Jesus being the vine, and we're connected to him. And by us being connected to him, we're connected to the eternal spirit, God, the Father. That's who we're connected to. So it's important for us to be connected to Jesus because he's connected to the Father. And if you want to know who the Father is, ask him. He'll he'll explain it to you. (laughs) He'll explain it to you. Uh, Listen, it's not my job to try to explain to you who Jesus is and who the Father really is. Only the scripture, listen, the scriptures tell us only only the son can actually tell you who the father is and only the father who can who, only the father can reveal. I can't even talk this morning. Even only the father can reveal who the son is. So a lot of churches will sit there trying to explain who the son is, trying to explain who the father is. You are wasting your time because only God can reveal who the son is and only the son who can reveal who the father is. But uh, those of us who already know, hold it within and let God bless those who are still seeking. A lot of times we we uh, we break up friendships based on things that God has shown you, but he hadn't shown anyone else. And it's not for you to show anyone else because God had to show you. And that's one of them. A lot of churches will spend a lot of time talking about who God is and who the son is. But only uh, the son can reveal the father and the father can reveal the son. And Jesus is saying, I am the true grapevine. I'm the true vine. And the father is the one who goes and does the pruning. So if you're going to be connected to the eternal God, you have to actually have Jesus to connect you to him. Yeah, that's just the way it is. Um, Let's go to John 15. John 15 verse number one says, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. Now the gardener is the one who goes and clips off the the bad edges or the, the bad fruit. Verse number two, he cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more fruit yeah the 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 father's the gardener he goes and cuts off every branch that does not produce fruit and he prunes those branches that do bear fruit so there's two there's one uh group of uh of, of, of branches that that don't produce any fruit and then there's another group of branches that just have a few uh brown spots on their on their leaves but he cuts off the ones who don't produce any fruit but he actually prunes the ones who do so that they can produce more verse number three you have already been pruned and purified by the message i have given you now what message was that remain in me and I'll remain in you that's the message that Jesus gave remain in me and I'll remain in you in other words you remain in me and you you remain connected to the source you'll produce fruit if you remain in me fruit what is fruit love joy peace goodness faith long suffering meekness patience all of that. that that's that's the fruit of the spirit and those are the that's the fruit that we're supposed to produce because we're connected to Jesus Christ. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. We're supposed to have all of that because we're connected, simply connected to Jesus Christ. Now, when we don't produce that and we're connected to Jesus Christ, he still says that, that we're his, but we're cut off. 
if we don't produce those fruits, we're cut off. Sometimes, in order to produce more love and more patience, more meekness, more temperance, more everything, or as far as the fruit goes of the Spirit, in order to do that, God has to prune us. Certain things don't go our way. Certain things don't happen for us. Certain things are cut away from us so that we can grow more. That's why you lose certain friends so that you can grow more. You can, you can produce more fruit. Trust me, they didn't want to leave. Trust me, you didn't want to leave. But for some reason, you grew apart and it helped you to grow a little more. So the next time you met with each other or saw each other, it's a different conversation. It's a different lifestyle. It's a different mindset. Because you've changed You've produced more fruit Remain in me and I'll remain in you For a branch cannot produce Verse number 4 For a branch cannot produce fruit If it's severed from the vine And you cannot be fruitful Unless you remain in me So you, if he cuts you away from him You can't be fruitful And you can't be fruitful Unless you remain with him So the key, the key here Is to remain with, with Jesus so that you can be connected to God and produce this fruit that he says that you're supposed to produce. Now, the wonderful thing is you can't produce it yourself. If you're sincere, you'll produce it. The spirit will, will produce that thing in you. If you're sincere, if you're not sincere, you can't fool God. You can't fool God. You can't fool God. You can fool other people. You can fool yourself, but you can't fool God. And you can't make these things. You can't make up fake love and fake patience and fake because mm -mm. God doesn't produce fake love, joy, peace, long, long suffering, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance fruits of the spirit these are the things that, that we're supposed to produce simply because we're connected to them and if we're connected to them and we're not producing those things then there's something wrong in us because he produces those things there's something in us that's blocking those fruits is something within us that's uh, keeping that fruit from growing is something in us to keep that fruit from coming to fruition hmm. verse number five yes I am the vine you are the branches those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing now that as a, as a preacher that freed me that meant that I can't do anything without God. Matter of fact, it's not it's not me. Any I can't do anything. Only God's doing it. Isn't that what Jesus said? It's not me. Uh, it's the one who sent me that's doing the work. So if people are becoming uh, a part of the Christ through your church, it's not because of you. It's because of him. I can't solve everybody's problems as a preacher. I can't solve every member's problems as a pastor. I, I can't do that. I can do nothing. Only God can do it. They're, they're his people. They're his children. They're his responsibility. I'm just there to oversee and manage until he returns. Manage as far as he tells me what to say or he gives me what to say, even if I don't understand what he's giving me, I say it because he's giving it to me and he does the work. I'm just trying to be sincere. I'm trying to be obedient. I don't want to do anything outside of him because if I do it outside of him, it's just me. And I don't have any power. And neither do you. Neither does any preacher in your city or anywhere else. We don't have any power. We can't do anything. All we can do is what he tells us to do. Most preachers and pastors think they're running something. They're not running anything. We aren't. We can't run anything because it's God's people and it's his power that we're even able to live, breathe and have a being and move. It's only because of him. At any given time, he can stop us from living. I told the church that a few weeks ago. I said, uh, right across, maybe not even two miles from my house, there's a big body of water and there's a, uh, 
a dam that holds it up holds the water from from uh from overflowing at any given time god could release that that water on me and everybody else and we'd all be gone if he really wanted to get us gone if he really wanted us gone he could do it in a number of ways because he has all the power Human beings always think they have something or they own something or they they have the power. We don't have any power. He only allows us to be the manager of what we have. There's nothing that we can do. Absolutely nothing. And the faster you realize that, the better off you will be. When I realized that, that took all the pressure off of me as a pastor. It took all the pressure off me as a preacher. All I'm doing is preaching what he said. I'm telling you what he said. Now, if you don't do it, it's up to you. If you don't feel to do it, that's up to you. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Don't fake it. Just don't do it. When you're ready to do it, then you walk walk forward and tell God you're ready to do it. But don't fake it. Because as long as you're in the vine, you're supposed to produce these fruits. You're supposed to produce fruit. But that's us we're thinking we're running something and we don't think we need God we think God is archaic we think you know and the devil has tricked us to think that God wants us to be uh, destroyed or killed or whatever no God doesn't want that God never planned for it he didn't want us to do that he didn't want to destroy us like I said if he wanted to destroy us he could have but that's not what he wanted he wanted all to be saved he wanted no one to perish but he wanted everybody to have eternal life. But people choose to do what they want to do to get out of the vine, to cut themselves away from the vine, to have God cut them away from the vine. And you don't have to do that. No, you don't, because he's the vine. He's connecting you to the spirit, the eternal spirit. The eternal spirit is the father. And as long as we're connected, that's why we say in Jesus name, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why we say that. In Jesus, we don't forget nothing about we love Jesus. <laughs> we don't forget Jesus. We call his name because until now we weren't able to be engrafted. But it was through the name of Jesus that we're engrafted. So. Remember that Jesus is the vine and don't cut yourself away from the vine. Don't let God cut you away from the vine. Just produce the fruit like he said. Well, how did you feel about today's lesson? Speak with us at beholy116 at gmail.com. Share Beholy with a friend, a colleague, or someone who needs it. Connect with us today at beholy116 at gmail.com. Your support of Beholy is greatly appreciated. Simply text the word GIFT to 614-363-6133. And if you're ever in Columbus, Ohio, give us a visit. Come visit us. Brought to you by the First Church of Christ Apostolic Way, a small church with a big heart.